this is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, take two. It's Gilbert Gottfried, and I'm here with my co-host Frank Santo Padre, and this is Gilbert and Frank's amazing colossal obsession. Obsessions. Now you're talking, brother. Now I like to bring you people. I like to bring you fellow Lon Chaney Jr. fans. Oh, good. <laughs> I like to. <laughs> you know, I just I put a sandwich sign. You know those old cardboard yeah. sandwich oh, yeah. signs on the like street? from the Three Yeah, Stooges and I walk Smokies. up and down 45th Street <laughs> lo looking for Lon Chaney Jr. fans. Anyway, our old friend Gary Girani is here. Gary and I go way, way back. How far back do we go? Oh, way back. To way back tops. To the, to the classic era at, at Tops. The tops trading company. cards. Mm -hmm. Gary, they call Gary the card king. This is true. And how many uh, trading card series off the top of your head? I'm going to put you on the spot. Have you written? Hundreds and hundreds. I remember back when the century turned, I tried to count how many card sets I wrote, edited, art directed, and there were hundreds back then, and I've done so many more since then, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, Hulk, Waltons, everything, <laughs> Six Million Dollar anything, Man. Right, right. I, I mean, my very first trading card set uh, was Emergency Adam-12. They combined the Adam-12 TV show. And Did you the even know there were Adam-12 cards? <laughs> no. But I, I remember <laughs> as a kid, that, that was, they had cards for everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had yeah. like about five cards in the pack mm -hmm. and a stick of gum. Mm -hmm. And I remember they had both... Uh, Ben Casey and Dr. Kildare. <laughs> I think that's go that's going to predate Gary. <laughs> yeah. But a few years, but only a few yeah. years. A few yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Beatles. Yes, Beatles oh, was huge Beatles for cards. Tops. Yeah. Right. Who wrote right. those? Woody Gelman and... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, my good friend Len Brown. Len Brown. Who wrote most of that Len stuff. Brown. He was hired, I think, around 59. He was there a long time. And I knew Len. I worked, when I worked there, Len was there. Len is a teddy bear. He yeah. was like my big brother yeah. there. Yeah, great guy. And, yeah, he did most of the text for that. He also wrote the famous Mars Attacks. Of course. For that. So the bottom line was whatever they gave you to do, whether it was a pre-existing property or movie or TV show or something that we were creating, you'd be there giving it your all. Of course. You know. <laughs> and and I, I remember the uh, Planet of the Apes. We cards. talked about those before we turned the mics on. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy seventy two. No, no, the, the, original, uh, oh, yeah. um, the original. The oh. original movie uh, uh, came out in nineteen sixty eight, and Topps put the product out in the candy counters of America in nineteen sixty nine. Okay, which was interesting because that was very different than the way we would eventually do it. We would always try to release the product literally like the first week the movie was out. Later, years later, with Star Wars and closing all those things. But back then, it was interesting. They they kind of waited that extra time. That's why I thought it was later. But you're yeah, right. It was yeah. a year later. Yeah. What, yeah. what I remember with the Planet of the Apes cards is that they have one where he's captured by them, and he does that line. Uh-huh. Uh, when he starts <laughs> screaming, you right. know, get your dirty paws off me. You d oh, get your paws off me, you damn dirty apes. So they cut damn. Out of the car. <laughs> we would have to do things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and... and I, was know, it? Yeah. I know why I said 72. That was the year you started. Exactly. Right, right. And then a couple of years after that, they did the Planet of the Apes TV Oh, the series. series. You remember the series? The short-lived oh, Planet oh, of the yes, Apes series? Yes. It was one year on CBS. Was Roddy like McDowell not, Yes, he yeah. was. But unfortunately, they didn't have him playing Caesar, which was the character he had played in the last couple of Planet of the Apes, which was a great character, which right. when they did the new versions, the Caesar character became the main character. It was a very strong character. Instead, they kind of just did a kind of watered-down version of the original movie plot with a couple of astronauts. I remember. And, and he was just the, the made-up character, but it was still Roddy McDowell, so that maintained right, the right, continuity. Right, right, right. He was the link. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And CBS had shown those movies, the original movies, on their Friday night at the movies, that kind of thing. The ratings went through the roof. 
So that's why this TV series was greenlit. Did you collect the cards? You you had the Planet of the Apes cards? Uh, yeah, I had the Planet of the Apes cards and the <laughs> Beatles. <laughs> What did you do with them? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's that, well, that's one of those things. Uh-huh. Everything from your childhood, Yeah. if you had any brains back then, right. you would have stored away in a vault. Yes. Because it, it, you'd retire on it well, years later. Well, in those later. days, those weren't collector <laughs> days. You didn't have mylar sheets. Yeah. You didn't have that, that exactly. whole kind of part culture. As a matter of fact, the way they would put the cards out in the pack and all that... Usually one card, the one where the piece of gum was kind of oh, rubbing, yeah. would be ruined. Trashed. You know, so you'd have to throw that with one out. With the melted out, sugar. Right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And years later, again, the collector market came in, and all of a sudden we had to rethink the whole strategy there. Right, right, right. And, and of course, I would chew Bazooka Joe. <laughs> Best bubblegum flavor ever. Yes. Yeah. You know, you, you know when, when Tops, it uh, was so crazy, but uh, soft bubblegum came in in a big way with things like bubble yum. That was like in the late I remember. 70 or whatever. Sure. And Tops, you know, was sort of caught behind on that a little. And they created their own soft gum called Smooth and Juicy, which was, eh. I remember saying, go back to the original bazooka because that's an all-American flavor we all love. Rip your fillings out. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but they finally did a soft bazooka and that was delicious because that flavor was just... I was writing I, bazooka co- uh, comics when I first got there. <gasps> did you? That's yeah, great. when you and I first met. That's so great. Now, like, I also remember a pack <laughs> that would have like a card and a piece of candy. It would come in a little box. Hmm. You know, like like you know, like a box that you'd get like with a sticker drops. or a trading card. I, weird. I think it would have one card, a little toy, and a couple of little candies, but it had to do with monsters. Yes, I know what that was. It it was like the box was half the pleasure. Yes, because what you got in it was sort of a throwaway, but wow. it was like the creature from the black or whatever the monster yes. was on the front. That was yeah. What that, era are we talking about that, here? Uh, like, this is this has got to be the sixties or yeah, uh, you know, yeah. This early sixties. Really, really, yeah, no, uh, I, primitive. Uh, well, I remember as a little kid uh, getting this, so I think like the fifties. Yeah, I'm saying it was really, really way back, and I don't think that was Tops. I think that was a, another company. Everybody would vie Maybe for Maybe Bowman the, or, or one yeah, of those companies. Yeah, or some was cheesy flo- little... Floating oh, around. Say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> bubblegum <laughs> companies, you candy companies. There were a bunch of them around that, that did that kind of thing. Do you remember the Monster Flip books? Oh, yes. <gasps> Here's the story behind that. A rival company... Now, now we're going back into the 60s again. Yeah. Uh, uh, a rival company... Uh, had gotten the rights from Universal to do the classic Frankenstein's, Dracula's, whatever. They even had Adam Costello in some of their cars. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they got away with the, the rights on that. Uh, and Topps wanted to jump in with a uh, monster movie card set during that era. This is what I'm collecting. We're talking about 64, sure. whatever. Um, so they couldn't do the cards because that license already been great. So they invented the flipbook format, and you had uh, Frankenstein, the Mummy, uh, the Creature, and uh, you know one other one. I think the Wolfman, and you'd have these little flips. And the Creature movies hadn't even been on TV yet. So the first time you got to see the creature tossing a car over in Florida or whatever the heck it was from Revenge of the Creature was in the Topps flipbook. Jeez, so, I man, mean, I love I don't that. think I even remember those. Yeah. You didn't hang on to any of that stuff. None. Yeah. None they would fall it. apart because they were like, you know, like kind of flimsy glue. And then the, it was like so many little, you know, pieces of paper to get the flip effect. And, so, yeah, they'd always fall apart on you. And, and <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't keep any of the Aurora Monster Models. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gary, you must have had those too. Oh, we, my God. The first one I ever got was the creature from the Black Lagoon, which they simply called the creature. Okay. And again, I had never seen the movie, Uh but I always wanted to, and I had been introduced to the character in the pages of Famous Monsters magazine. Now, we're talking about late 50s, early 60s, before a lot of these movies had come on TV, you know, like The Creature was a movie from the 50s. So I remember just seeing the photos of this greatest of all monsters, head to toe, great looking monster, right? Desperately waiting and waiting for it to come on TV. Finally did December of 1964 on The Late Show here in New York. I think I sent you the, the ad that I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We that. were talking about Million Dollar Movie. He's a <laughs> right. Brooklyn kid like us, so oh, he remembers yeah. he remembers Creature Features. And, oh, and, uh, God, and the Benson Hills Brooklyn theater. experience. I remember movie. I used to read about these movies and Famous Monsters of Filmland, of course, and then I would hear, I'd see in the paper that one would be showing on TV, like sometimes one in the morning, and I'd be like, 
you know, with my nose pressed to the screen. <laughs> Waiting. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you have to, like, sneak into the room so your parents couldn't hear? I mean, yeah. that was what a lot of people, they had the TV on so low. Yes, yes. And you could barely hear it, but you you had to see it. You know, it was, and if you didn't see it, it might be six months again before it was on again. Right, Not right. like, I mean, I tell these kids today, it's like, God, you don't know how easy you've got it. We used to have to suffer for the things we, we have to wait. Well, also, you made the point that there was no DVD or VHS, though, so if you wanted to own a little piece of the movie, that's where trading cards were so yeah. great. And action you know, figures weren't as big as they are now. That wasn't right. It wasn't big, I remember wasn't when the GI Joe. You know, I remember when when the the, t- the the term action figure was created because they were dolls mm-hmm. and they were dolls <laughs> right. for little boys, so right. they couldn't call yeah. them dolls. Right, right. So they invented action figures. Right. Uh, the, I think the first card series I remember getting from Tops, collecting from Tops, were the Norm Saunders Batman's, the Batman paintings. Oh, they were gorgeous. Which I, I have a I have a repro on on a framed on a wall in my office, but they're they're beautiful. And there's a story behind that. The um, when the Batman phenomenon hit big in 1966, uh, at first Adam West and Burt Ward were not allowing their likeness to be on these things. Interesting, and so there was a lot of going on. But Batman was so huge, and because DC Comics or whatever owned Batman, you could get a license. You just couldn't use the TV episode imagery, but you could use the character in any way. So Topps didn't want to wait. Forever to get the rights cleared. That's so the they, story behind those. They That's so cool. Hired this magnificent, incredible painter, the great Norm Saunders, who eventually did the Mars Attacks classic set for Tops, and he painted these amazing. Do you remember sets. these cards? They're Batman. I, I, if I showed them to you, and I'll, I will when yeah. we when we finish, I'll show you the I have on on my phone. You'd recognize them immediately. Yeah. They're paintings of Batman and the Joker and the Penguin. The because as he said, they couldn't get the the yeah. the license. So we painted our the, own set and and, and basically, you know, those paintings were fantastic. I mean, looking yeah. back, I'm glad we didn't get the rights at first because we I joined the company a sure. few years later. Came later. But um uh because as a result, we did these fantastic painted sets. I think we did about like Three or four series, They're great. and then eventually the rights were cleared for the with photos. puzzles on the back, and we did oh, God, the whole puzzle. <laughs> yeah. But then we did eventually do you did they you did them they did them uh, like, which had a lot of images from the 1966 Batman the, the movie. movie right right I, I have those too and yeah. I also got a flashback didn't the Dave Clark Five have their own card. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not only the Dave, oh God, you know they would try anybody. Now, at least the Dave Clark Five were the Dave, but I mean, years later, I remember doing Menudo. Oh sure, I, remember, well, I was know, there when they were. Right. I was there when they were doing. Right. I was there when they were doing New Kids on the Block. New Kids on the Block. And well, well, Cindy Lauper, we yeah. did Michael Jackson. In Living Color. Me, right, that was right. all there on my watch. And Michael Jackson, they flew me out to his compound. I'm there waiting for him to come out and I see llamas looking at me from the windows. <laughs> oh, and, and, uh, and then he comes out and he, he shakes my hand, which I have to admit was the flimsiest handshake. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And, 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 he, he, and he says, no, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of your work. And I had just didn't, uh, uh, done the movie Pumpkinhead, I think, at the time or whatever. It was right around that time. And he wasn't talking about anything like that. He was talking about my bubblegum card. The trading card. Uh, Michael what? Jackson was a, was, a, was a trading card uh, Well, fan he was collector. a big kid. Yeah, so that's great to hear. everything that we did. And uh, another and, thing. And he had small kids around him. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. that's a whole other. That would have made a very interesting sub-series. Now you. <laughs> uh, uh, Those would have made interesting trading I got to tell. I, I, I won't. <laughs> An interesting puzzle on the back. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> get the piece with the. Oh, yeah. no, I don't want to go yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they but, did. They uh, did a lot of those bands. They did the monkeys. Uh, yeah, they did yeah, all I mean, that I mean, stuff. some of them made sense. Some yeah. of them were just what the hell. There were let's, laughing let's, cards. I have a. I, I have them right. from the from the right. Tops Vault. I have a, a because pack laughing of open was laughing huge, cards. right? And that was also like around you know the, the late sixties, sixty eight, sixty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I caught one of the. It was funny. I was switching around on the TV, and I see, oh, it's laughing. And it must have been that later. Oh, the Willie season. Tyler years. Yeah, the later ones. I, I Patty didn't Deutsch. recognize anybody. Well, uh, yeah, because yeah. they kept changing. Well, like Saturday Night Live, as as it went yeah. on, some people became famous and they left, and other right. interesting people came in. I think like Lily Tomlin came in later. And some less than interesting people were brought in. <laughs> 
No <laughs> names. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that happens too. I think that la- Lily Tomlin stayed on and Gary Owen stayed on yeah. for the end, for when Willie Tyler was there. Beautiful I think downtown every- Burbank, right. Yeah, I think right. almost everybody else was gone. Yeah. Had flown. Maybe Joanne Worley was still Joanne there. Worley probably yeah, stuck everybody around else to, flew to the, the coop. end. But, uh, <laughs> to, to the big time. I got one last thing about Michael Jackson, I will say. He insisted that the piece of bubble gum that appeared in the packs with his cards be wrapped and like a Wrigley's piece. None of this... The powdered. Yeah, this, yeah. So he kind of forced us to, you know, what get he did. Our act he was together. such a purist. He didn't want the powdered gum to well, ruin the car. I don't know if that, if that was it, or, or maybe <laughs> he just, you know, wanted a better piece of gum. Or, but of course, we we did. And actually, that well, that he little. needed something to hand out at parties. <laughs> 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 well, I guess that did the trick. You uh, know, if if you're trying to get laid, you don't bring out the cheap beer. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the good stock. <laughs> well, we kept it well supplied. Did you do wacky packs too? We, we did, oh yeah, before yeah. me though, because I when I came in, it was like yes, l- yes later because I I, well, since I, I started in, I started in seventy two. I don't think I was officially full time until seventy three. So I was like still in college, still you know working part time, and um, it was weird because it was it was Lem Brown who hired me, and that only happened uh, because he saw my ad on the Monster Times. Monster Times. Times. You remember the Monster really... Times? Oh, that yeah. That newspaper? Yes. Yeah. Now, now i got to talk a second about that. Love because that thing. you, you got to remember, I grew up loving famous monsters of Filmland magazine yeah. and all these. Barry Ackerman. And, and there was another great one, Castle of Frankenstein, that Calvin Beck uh, was in charge of. And he was he was a wacko guy. And again, this is what we what we kids had back then who loved horror movies. So when the Monster Times came out in the early 70s, I was about right at that time to be able to, to contribute to these rather than just being a fan. So that was my first professional writing was for the Monster Times, Confessions of the Black Lagoon Creature. Mm-hmm. I became the creature. I finally achieved my dream. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I relived my experiences going from South America and the Black Lagoon, going to Hollywood and having an affair with Esther Williams because it was the 50s. It was all this crazy stuff. And I had no idea that the humorous approach was really going to work. But they loved it. And then they started to ask me, to, why don't you become Godzilla? Why don't you become Gorgo? Why don't you become the giant behemoth? And just tell the stories from their point of view. <laughs> and how did and that... I, and, I remember ahead, there was a magazine, uh, Monsters to Laugh With. By Stanley. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> you are good, Godfrey. <laughs> what, beautiful. As a matter of fact, the the, you know... What fools ye mortals be! Monsters to laugh with by Stan Lee, <laughs> and and again that was what that was was a variation of what you were doing on trading cards. You'd have a photo, black and white photo of a monster movie, but instead of a funny caption on the bottom, they would have like a comic book balloon with a funny gag. Yeah, and, I remember yeah. those funny yeah. monster yeah. cards. It was the lamest jokes. Yeah, it would be like the Wolf Man, and it would be like I need a shave. Yeah, those yeah. kind of things. <laughs> well, a lot of blood know. bank jokes. Well, we, with we, yeah, oh yes. Yeah. We, we, we also not only did we have lame jokes, but we felt it was our obligation to continue those lame jokes over the years. So there are some lame jokes that kept on being repeated in our mods. Hi, I'm the new babysitter with the Frankenstein monster. Oh. We've used that over and over. In other words, boy, they sure have ugly girls in this neighborhood. Those two we kept repeating or over Or like and the over. mummy would be, uh, I need a Band-Aid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, did, they did stickers with Marvel superheroes with dumb gags in the, in the, in yes. the 70s. And that, Do you remember I, I, those? I, I did those as yeah, well. They were yeah. Die cut. They they were die cut and they had yeah. the balloons incorporated oh, yeah, I got them into all. it. And it was the same kind of lousy, ridiculous gags that we're talking about, uh, the obvious kind of stuff. Uh, oh you came God. to tops from the Monster Times, and I so I, I, so yeah, let me explain how that. Yeah, I, I was so I I was writing for the Monster Times, and uh, because I was writing for every issue. They gave me a free classified ad in the back of the mag- uh, publication. It was a newspaper. It was actually like Rolling yeah, Stone sure. format yeah. rather than an actual magazine. And Lem Brown at Tops uh, happened to be reading the Monster Times one day. And what my classified ad was for was saying, wanted 16 millimeter science fiction and horror movies and all that because we were collecting films. And Lem Brown was a film collector. So he, he got in touch with me. We started talking. He said, you're doing all this kind of, you know, you did this Monster Times articles, this funny stuff. Why don't you come down and try to write some gags for us? I said, sure, why not? And so I got my job through not the New York Times, but through the Monster Times. What was the first top series? The very first day that I was at Tops, 
they were doing their Creature Features series, okay? At that point, Creature Features was big for them and Wacky Packages, yep, okay? Yep, yep, So the very first day, it was crazy back then. I, it, really, when I look back at this, I don't know why, why the heck they didn't work this out. Tops got the license to do the Universal Monsters, but at that point in time, you could show the photos of the monsters, but the actors in the shots, like the women that were being carried off or whatever... They didn't clear the rights to the actresses oh, right. and actors or whatever. <laughs> so what they did is they took photos of all the people at Tops and superimposed our heads over all these actors. Oh, so, so the very that's when first, you stood in for Karloff. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, for Karloff <laughs> in um, Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There's Mr. Hyde on one hand and I'm, whoops, I'm on the other side. And also, I stood in for Onslow Stevens. Oh, okay. in, there you go, Gilbert. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> in, in Gilbert, House of Gilbert just had an orgasm. Part of the, <laughs> part of the, the dream sequence. Uh, 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 and it's great because he's like, the monster is there, and Onslow Stevens, who's deranged, is pointing. Arr! It was just part of a, a, a montage sequence in the movie, but we have the photo, and it's me instead of Onslow Stevens. I think the gag for that is look, Albert, it's a hamburger stand, you know. Tell tell people tell people and I think people would be interested in the in the process when you did, and you did all the Star Wars cards too. Oh and, God, yes! And you're the, yes. you you put out those wonderful books, by the way. And thank you so much. Oh, I'm for glad sending you enjoy them. them. Yeah, they're Abrams, absolutely wonderful. Yeah, they they did a whole bunch. Uh, they're great Abrams books, and we'll plug them too at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they also did the the Planet of the Apes. I mean, they're getting even beyond Star and Wars, and they're nicely is, done. They really, they really they executed are. them very very well. They even well. include like you know cards in the back. I mean, they're like crazy stuff. Oh. And, they, and, the, and the covers are like the same, uh, the wrapper yeah. kind of thing. So they, you, they, they really got into you it. You were working on some of the most, some of the earliest licensing for Lucasfilm. And, oh, yeah. and what did they send you? I mean, well, how, how, does the, how does the trading card, uh, I know the I answer to this, obviously, <laughs> since I did them, but, but how, does, <laughs> how does the trading card writer approach the project if you haven't seen the movie? <laughs> Sometimes they send you a script. Sometimes yes. they yes. Uh, it was it was a very interesting process, right? Uh, in the early days, they would get you a script, and of course, in the early days, everything was a little you know more lax or whatever. As time went on, and then the, the Star Wars thing exploded or whatever, they were afraid to give you scripts because they didn't want the secrets of their movies to get out. That was like a big deal back then. So after a while, they wouldn't send you the script. I'd have to fly to California. They would lock me in a room, and I would have to read the script. They'd let me take notes. Is that wild, Gilbert? Yeah. Right. They'd it lock is. him in a room. He'd have to read the script and give it back. Wow. Yeah, it was like do, top, so we could do the card secret. series. Right, right, right. Because and you just fill a book with notes so you knew you had captions. To, yeah, when yeah. The time Every came. now and then, if there wasn't anybody around, I would have a tape recorder and I would actually just read the script, so I could. It's easier to remember everything that way. Now here's <laughs> something. That I'm sure you had nothing to do with, but I'm putting <laughs> well, it in here. In my opinion, anyway. That's... And I think the guy who made them was something like his name was like Kristoff or something. And do you remember those little, um, kind of oblong comic books that they'd hand out on the street? That would teach you about Jesus and all those things. <laughs> yeah, Gary wrote those. <laughs> I wish I could say I was involved in that. Do you remember uh, those? I don't you know, think you know I do either. I don't remember that, but I. But the, all I can give you is not not necessarily religious, but it's almost biblical. Uh, when I saw the original Steve Reeves Hercules movies, they 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 gave us a thermometer that you would push it, and if if you were really strong, you were Hercules. If you were if you were less strong, you were whatever. <laughs> That's about the closest I could think to a gimmick, right? Not right, a right. religious. Well, you know one, what, but... Gil? We'll throw that out to the listeners. Yes. If you guys remember, we'll see what people write. I I know Pendulet. He he knew about them. When you say oblong comics, you mean they were rectangular comics? Yeah, rectangular. That's okay. the word I was looking for. And they would hand them out for free wow. on the street. These, like, a church group. And God. they would have these stories about, you know, someone who's a drug addict or someone who's cheating on his girlfriend. Doesn't ring a bell. And uh, So it would be and, a real-world story that they would then give you a religious so it yeah. wasn't really depicting images, scenes from and the Bible. or Quite or, often, they'd yeah. wind up in hell at the end. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, there used to be TV shows I like that. There was, there was something called Insight, that there were these little little, little dramas, little human stories yeah. about, again, that, yeah, and yeah, at the I remember that on Sunday mornings. It was almost Twilight Zonian. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but I, I have to say, I, I can't quite remember. That's great. We did talk about doing 
trading cards based on the Bible and I was just gonna a ask painted that. series. It seems you like know, a no brainer. It was like there were so many disasters and exciting things going on. Not to mention there's demonic possession, all this right. other stuff in the Bible. I'm reminded of the Odd Couple episode where uh, <laughs> where his Opera brother cards, where yes, his brother, yes, where his brother, yes. oh, yes. his brother yeah. Floyd works for the Bubblegum Card Company. Great moments in yes. opera. Number sixteen, Mimi gets tuberculosis. Yes. <laughs> You, you, you know, you know. Meanwhile, years later, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like that for for certain venues that are yeah. into it. Because years later, you did have adult and cards, if you will. Oh, sure, sure. That, that was big business was for a while. Redfield, wasn't it? Something. What was that actor's name? William Redfield. William yeah. Redfield, the yeah. guy William from Redfield. Cuckoo's Nest. Yes. Mm-hmm. He played. Yes. He played. Uh, he played Felix's brother. Yeah. Boy, you are that, good from Cuckoo's uh, Nest. Yes. 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 You William are good. Redfield also, just for us trivia fans and science, he was the fellow who captained the little ship in Fantastic Voyage. That, that is they correct. Into the, the, he also a, appeared in a radio show that I wrote a million years ago that I didn't want to think about. But, yeah, he was wonderful. Really nice Not guy. Not to be confused with Renfield. That's, yeah. what, I, that's yeah. what I thought you were saying at first. <laughs> oh, right? and I think he was in the fortune cookie also. He might have he, been. He yeah. got around. Oh, he... Yeah. Oh, and the Hot Rock. Yeah, he's on the yes. Hot Rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cliff, he must have had a. He must have Cliff been, Osmond's uh, in the Fortune Cookie. Do you remember Cliff Osmond? Oh, wait, I'll show him to you. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one. You, you come back one day. We'll do a whole show God about Almighty. weird, weird character actors. Do you remember all the cease and desist letters we used to get about wackies <laughs> <laughs> from all these companies telling us to stop? <gasps> well, we, and, and, do you remember uh, Wacky Packs, Gilbert? They were the product parody I, stickers. I, Oh, yes, like yes, and yes. Like crust lip torn soup and Mrs. Clean. Those yes. were the classics in the 60s. They kind of, you know, was, set the stage for Garbage Pail Kids years yes, they later did. because yes, they, they had did. that same, what I used to call gleefully subversive sense of humor. Yes. Tops would, would look for that aspect in the kids because kids like to rebel and all that. And we'd come up with things that they can slip into their notebooks so the teachers couldn't see. Like, we were playing. Contraband. To and, that, right. That and, was like, they audience. would have you who... But they call it boohoo. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Well, those oh, are the, I, I, those are the classic. Ones. I remember instead of playtex living gloves, I I I, I wrote the gag uh, slaytex living yes, gloves. They're not only I'm, living, but they're strangling. I know somebody. that one. Yeah, yeah. Chock full of nuts and bolts. <laughs> 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 Cr- crackle of crayons. No, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, they were great. Yeah. And 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 part of the process of that, you know. Um, they would send me to the uh, supermarket. Me to too. Look for, yeah, oh, in the you know, 90s. And it yeah. got harder and harder to find products yes, that we sir. didn't parody. Or or ones that were not on the verboten list, right. where somebody had right. not already written a letter saying that we're going to sue you. Tops was very good. I mean, Tops would, the minute they said, take it away, they would stop it. They didn't, you know, that play was games That was one of the joys of my life, I have to say. Those freelance days, going there for two days. We were just describing to Gilbert the old Tops factory in Brooklyn in Red Hook. Nothing like it. And it like was it. frozen in time. Yeah. Asbestos yeah. everywhere. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Was, I'm telling you, the place was a fire trap. Uh, old, old ladies in the luncheonette in the lun- in the cafeteria with a, with hair nets, yes. and they had a scoop of potato salad and an ice cream scoop. It, it was, it was <laughs> really a, like going a, back in time. Another era. It the was. place looked like, but it in '92 it looked era. like '53. Right, right. but there. that was what was so cool for the, uh, those of us who worked there, who were yes. most nostalgia freaks and and people who were and into Drew this. was there. Drew was, oh, Drew was wow. doing toxic. Fit right to- in. Toxic, yeah. yeah he yeah. was. He, and, uh, we had some amazing, Mark and crazy, creative course, people Arts Beagleman. Who, who did work for us. And there was a huge crossover with the Mad Magazine people because they did a lot of the same kind of humor that we did. Matter of fact, Stan Hart was That's the guy right. who wrote most of the parodies of the movies and TVs for Mad. And he would do, do work for us, too. Very funny guy. He was wound up being the head writer on the Carol Burnett show. Yes, Stan Hart. Uh, yeah. And he was this... Tall, towering. He'd come into hello, 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 and everybody would kind of he wrote know, everything. Scared, yeah. Uh, he was he was kind of formidable, but but brilliant. Well, there was a lot of talent coming through that place. Oh, also aside from the religious comics, this is to <laughs> all of the <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Find out, out the names of those monster candy packages. Those little boxes. Yes. Right, right. Because okay. I had them, too. Yeah. And, and I remember, yeah, what you got inside was crap. But People it was, will it know. It was the box yeah, that the was, sta- that that was, was the thing. Right, time. right. Real quick, tell Gilbert the uh, the Star Wars erection card story, because I think he'll enjoy this. I am asked about this usually more than anything you know, else. but it's I've a good closer. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 no problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, when we did the original Star Wars set way back, 77, they really weren't fully prepared to give us everything we needed because the Topps products was nothing but pictures, 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 just constantly had pictures. Uh, so they kept going through all of their files and eventually, they said, all right, we'll go through, pull something from this file. Okay. 
So I'm pulling stuff out and, uh, you know, no big deal. There's a picture of C-3PO and I send it through. I write the caption. It gets printed. A few months later, I'm out in California again to uh, select pictures for the next set. I get a call from Tops. <laughs> I'm in a hotel room. I get a call saying, you gave us this pornographic picture of c 3 what, what are you talking about? He's, <laughs> he's having an erection. I'm going, I don't understand what you're even talking about. Well, sure enough, you look at the picture and there seems to be this metallic appendage extending from that portion of his body. <laughs> and Tops immediately airbrushed out the offending I'm appendage. Dialing up the pi- I'm dialing up the picture for you. <laughs> and that became the most famous. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely a dick. Yep. <laughs> And on three, on three PO. Oh, I, had, I, had to, I had to explain this to the uh, the president of the company. R2 was a very happy uh, uh, fellow. Arthur Shoren, who was a wonderful guy, really, really cool guy. And uh, I said, look, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe they were playing around on the set. Maybe, you know, Harrison Ford was having some fun. I don't know, but for some reason. And it wound up in their book. Nobody noticed. Lucasfilm didn't notice. So it was I a gag. I it was an on-set notice. gag. Yeah. yeah uh, and and our, our art director didn't notice. It was only after it was printed that yeah. people noticed. Yes. But but I think years later, someone actually did. I hate to say it because it kills the whole mystique of it. But apparently that that it seemed like it was just part of his costume got, got loose or something. Right. Frankly, right. I don't remember seeing that. On <laughs> and I, I like that hand move. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> But yes, that that uh, well, that card is infamous. I I remember <laughs> Disney after they did the uh, animated uh, Tarzan, they made a Tarzan electric uh, action figure, <laughs> and you press the button. And it was supposed to be, I think, that he was holding a spear and uh-huh. moving his hand up and down. Uh-huh. And it's like when you took the spear away. It just looked like he was jerking off. Hilarious. The hand was right at crotch level, going back and forth. Hilarious. Well, Disney was famous for playing around oh, like that. Well, the Little Mermaid. Oh, the Little Mermaid yeah, box that, that, cover, right. the VHS and box. I remember because yes, they that said was, that, that you could see a dick. Right, in, uh, if you look, if you're in the, looking in for the it, the tower, right, the castle. Right, right. right. And the, I remember, I thought, when I heard that, I thought, oh, this is one of those things where I could go either right. way. And then I saw it, and I said, no, that's definitely a dick. There's yeah. no way around it. <laughs> I got to give those guys credit. And this I is mean, Iago speaking. <laughs> exactly, right? Shame on you. Iago uh, says, that's a dick. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> we should, we're going to wrap this one and, and come back and do another one oh, about God. your yeah, wonderful so book. Much more but, crazy stuff. But plug right? those Tops books. Tell people where to get those, tra- those trading card books that Abrams did because they're absolutely wonderful. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess, you know, whether it's at a bookstore near you, if there are any bookstores anymore. No bookstores left. Uh, in that case, you go to Amazon or, or whatever, and they're, they're all, all up there. Uh, there I, I did one. Probably the best one is the 1977. That's the thing that really changed the world. I even wrote a screenplay called 1977 about how Star Wars what a came. Great year. And, and how I went culture. from zero to hero in a way at Tops because I was the movie guy. Right, so right. I was suddenly in charge of all of that. So was, this was the Star Wars books, the three they of those. Did the Star Wars and then and, and Empire. Uh, they they did Star Wars, they did Empire, and they did I mean they did the, the original. Right. And then we also did the um the wide vision. Yeah, those are great. Uh, original trading cards, you know, the classics baseball card size and shape. And then I remember like uh, uh you know, at a certain point, I guess it was in the, in the 90s, I said, let's let's do something really amazing. Long cinemascope cards, they did if cards you will. Like I don't know if you've ever Gilbert, seen those. Yeah, in cinemascope, like, a, like, a, like, mock, oh. like a, a mimicking the look yes. of cinemascope right. for, so, for a so trading it card. So it wasn't the standard. It was, the, it was just like the way you go to see a movie and the square shape of the old screen would then turn into something twice as long for full cinemascope Panavision. Well, this was, we were able to do justice to all that great imagery in the original Star Wars movie, and including the opening shot with the overhead. The, right. All that stuff looked gorgeous in full wide. And then the backs of those cars, I had the storyboards and everything to show how it... It was like a state-of-the-art trading card set. The original stuff is wonderful pop culture, but it's a little goofy. This thing was like for American cinematographer. Yep. It was just re- and there's really a Planet of the Apes book too. The, the Planet yeah, of the Apes cards yeah. are reprinted. Which covers the original Charlton Heston yeah. movie and then some of the other sets and even the Tim Burton when, movies yeah. in there. We'll tell the Charlton Heston story when we come back and we'll talk a little bit about Dinosaur's Attack. Wonderful. Next week. Yes. <laughs> if Gary comes back. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so I have to wrap this up? Yes. Oh. You have to wrap this up. Only because we're coming back to do another one. Oh, yes. <laughs>
Let's see. If uh, you can, oh. Let's see if you can handle that. Okay. <laughs> Boy, we could almost do three shows. And all we could at least we could do six. About. But we'll, we'll, well, this is this is going well. Wow, but I want to get to the book. This is great. Huh? Army? No, it's the name of our guest. Yes, I know. What? But uh, what's that? Gary Girani. Gabby Girani. Not Gabby. <laughs> Gabby Hayes. <laughs> I'm here with Gary? Gabby Gerani. Yeah. Hey, I'm what's his Gabby name? You Gary Gerani. Gary. <laughs> Hi. This is Gilbert Gottfried. This has been Gilbert Gottfried's amazing, colossal podcast with my co host, Frank Santo Padre. And we've been talking to Gary Gerani. <laughs> no, Gerani. <Yeah>. Gerani. <laughs> Gary Gerani. And I'm having a ball. And then he got the name of the show wrong just now. Yeah, that's fine, too. <laughs> oh, it was Gilbert and Frank's amazing colossal obsession. <laughs> this is great. With, with a Gabby guest Gerani. Whose I, I, name I, I, I can't pronounce. <laughs> with Gabby Gerondi. Well, no, that's true. With I certainly Card do. King. I, yes, indeed. Gary, one of the masters of pop culture. Gary Gerani. Thank you so much. Come back next week. I will be here. Okay.